The Donghua begins by showing a young man named Ningchen, who is cultivating to increase his spiritual strength. He often spent most of his time meditating to reach the highest cultivation level. However, even though he practiced every day, Ningchen could only reach the first level of cultivation, or the lowest cultivation. Even when he had joined as one of the soldiers of the royal army, the deputy commander of the army named Lu still often insulted his abilities. Ningchen was constantly humiliated, but he never gave up on his duty as a royal guard. That day, he and several other royal guards were tasked with escorting the princess of the emperor, who was about to go to the royal night camp area. On the way, he sensed the presence of a beast, so he ventured to check the situation on the path the princess of the emperor was about to take. And as it turned out, his assumption was proven correct because he found a very strong and savage forest bear. Ningchen tried hard to subdue the beast bear despite his low cultivation power. Armed with tenacity and determination, he finally defeated the beast bear and increased his strength to the third cultivation level. After successfully getting rid of the wild bear, he accidentally seized the troops from the Wu Hang royal palace led by Prince Wu Hang gathered in the middle of the forest. Prince Wu Hang and his troops intend to kidnap the princess of the emperor to carry out a coup or rebellion against the imperial emperor. Fortunately, Ning Qin immediately informed the princess of the emperor about the information so that she could choose another path and survive the attack of Wu Hang's army. After the princess of the emperor learned that Ning Qin had secured the passage from the beasts and obtained important information from the traitors, the princess of the emperor thanked and appointed him as the second deputy commander. After Ning Qin safely delivered the princess of the emperor to her destination, he went to a cave to study sacred palm art. According to legend, the sacred tread was only passed on to a select few, and even a person as strong as Emperor Chang'an could not inherit that power. Unexpectedly, after Ning Qin performed a short ritual to learn the science, he could easily master the sacred palm art. Not long after the ritual ended, a masked man sent by the Wu Hang Palace suddenly attacked him, so the fight between them was unavoidable. However, after the masked man realizes the magnitude of Ning Chen's strength, the man decides to stop the fight and run away. After the princess of the emperor learned about Ning Chen's power development and sacred palm knowledge, she appreciated him by allowing him to train in the martial tower so that his cultivation strength could reach the fourth level. After meditating for several days, Ning Chen was finally able to increase his cultivation to the fourth level and managed to master some of the strongest moves, such as the inner eye skill and the dragon's roar. Shortly after, the princess of the emperor approached him and informed him that Prince Wu Hang was planning to master the jade carving in the emperor's palace after learning that Emperor Chanlan had died. Since the current empire in the capital has been ruled by traitors, the princess of the emperor ordered Ning Qin to gather an army still loyal to the late emperor. Ning Qin immediately rushed to the royal army's encampment area to gather reinforcements. While walking through the forest, a masked youth suddenly attacked him. Fortunately, the princess of the emperor managed to save him from the attack of the masked man who turned out to be the third prince or the princess of the emperor older brother who had betrayed the emperor. Ning Chen's battle against the third prince and the battle between the princess of the emperor and prince Wu Hang continued. Their battle was fierce, but Ning Chen managed to beat the third prince and immediately reported the incident to the great general Wang Chang. Through his inner eye power, Ning Chen could tell that the other two great generals were being influenced by someone to betray general Wang Chang. However, general Wang Chang was not at all afraid of the threat because, at this time, he prioritized killing the traitors of the emperor. That night, the royal army camp was suddenly ravaged by a very strong windstorm, apparently created by a black prison inmate named Lei Dong Xiao. General Wang Chang was very surprised that Lei Dong Xiao escaped from the black prison with a tight security seal. General Wang Chang then ordered Ning Qin to go to the princess of the emperor camp because, most likely, the emperor's traitors would harm her. After arriving at the princess of the emperor's place, Ning Chen found that she had already begun to give up because the empire's current state was getting more chaotic. She explained that the third prince, Xian Feng, and Prince Wu Hang targeted her palace to steal the tower inscription in the palace. However, Ning Chen convinced the princess of the emperor not to give up by saying that he would always protect her from any harm. Hearing that, she was again excited because of his support, and secretly had feelings for him. That night, Ning Chen, Commander Q, and the princess of the emperor intend to put up a fight and slaughter all the traitors in the place. With the power of his golden wings, Ning Chin could easily slay the crows sent by enemy spies and defeat dozens of soldiers who had betrayed him. He even damaged the encampment area of princes Wu Hang and Xian Feng to make the place fall apart. The battle between Ning Chin and the prince of Wu Hang happened again and was so fierce that Wu Hang was almost defeated. He immediately ordered his men to fight against Ning Chin in an increasing crisis. But before his three men launched an attack, Ning Chin had already killed them with the nine-petal lotus move. Seeing this, 
Prince Wu Hang and Xian Feng immediately rushed to flee from that place. But even though the two enemies had left, the princess of the emperor had to face another threat because one of the great generals, Wu Du, had betrayed and intended to kill her. Wu Du has the power to absorb the life energy of others, so the princess of the emperor and commander Q find it very difficult to deal with his attacks. Fortunately, Ning Chi managed to stop Wu Du with strength and forced him to leave the place. After that long battle, the princess of the emperor ordered Ning Chen to check the condition of the imperial capital, considering that he could fly with golden wings. When he arrived in the capital area, Ning Chen had to deal with several palace gate guards, Prince Wu Hang, and a confidant of Prince Wu Hang named Li Guanlan. After Ning Chen managed to repel the attacks of the palace guards and Prince Wu Hang's sacred palm and golden wings, he immediately ordered Li Guanlan to capture Ning Chen. The battle between Ning Chen and Li Guanlan was fierce because the abilities of the two were both superior. However, in the middle of the fight, someone suddenly shoots Ning Chen with an arrow, sending him flying into a residential area. It turned out that the person who had shot the arrow was the princess of the emperor's older brother, Yi Chang, who had betrayed him. But instead of answering, Yi Chang stabbed Ning Chen with a small dagger until he fell unconscious. After waking up from fainting and finding himself in prison, Ning Chen immediately tried to recover his wound with strength. After recovering enough, he started to make a mess as the guards delivered the food and instantly slaughtered the entire prison guard. As a result, the battle between them was unavoidable. Just as Ning Chen was about to kill Yi Chang, Li Guanlan and his troops reappeared to capture Ning Chen so that the fight between them started again. Fortunately, he managed to stop the fight and escape from Li Guanlan and the Iron Army. Some time later, Ning Chen finally found out that currently, Emperor Chan Lan was actually still alive, and there was a man named Lord Ya who was spying on Emperor Chan Lan's movements using a crow. Afterward, Ning Chen sneaked in wearing iron soldier's clothes and began to attack Lord Ya in the palace. Although he had difficulty defeating Lord Ya because of the palace troops and Li Guanlan, who continued to protect Lord Ya, Ning Chen finally managed to kill him with one strike. The next day when Ning Chen was about to leave the capital, he was confronted by a woman with a red umbrella who was Li Guanlan's accomplice. Fortunately, he had the help of the princess of the emperor so that he could be freed from the woman's whirlwind attack. After a brief fight against the parasol lady and the royal army, Ning Chun and the princess of the emperor were finally able to escape safely. They immediately rushed to the encampment of General Wang Chang's army to help them defeat the black army led by a prince from the black present kingdom named Dong Xiao. Seeing that the princess of the emperor and Ning Chun had rejoined, Wang Chang's army of generals was excited to fight again until they could finally repulse the black army and Prince Dong Xiao. The princess of the emperor and Prince Dong Xiao was about to negotiate for cooperation against the traitors. Still, the negotiations were postponed because he had to ask his king about the decision. When Prince Dong Xiao and his bodyguards were about to return to the Black Present Royal Palace, Wu Du suddenly appeared and immediately attacked them. Fortunately, Wu Du was defeated by Prince Dong Xiao's bodyguards, who forced him to flee. The princess of the emperor, who learned about the attack, began to suspect that Wu Du and the traitors were trying to thwart negotiations between her kingdom, the Black Dragon, and the Black Present Kingdom. On the other hand, the Umbrella Woman, who turned out to be Nei Hongzhuang, met the rebel army led by General Feng Jian. She intended to drown the Imperial Princess encampment and the Black Dragon Army with her strength. At the same time, General Wang Chang ordered Ning Chen to go to General Tian Lung at the Black Dragon Kingdom to present their negotiation plan with the Black Present Kingdom. However, just as Ning Chen was about to leave for his destination, Nei Hongzhuang again blocked him. Fortunately, he managed to escape her whirlwind after the Princess of the Emperor came to take over the fight. Ning Chen used the opportunity to rush off to the emergency meeting in the territory of the Black Dragon Realm. However, when he arrived at the Black Dragon Royal Palace, many rebel troops were standing guard in front of the royal gates. Fortunately, he could easily escape the army and barge into the Black Dragon Palace. But, after Ning Chen told the news about the negotiation plan, General Tian Lung was angry and offended because he felt that the Black Dragon Kingdom could still face the traitors alone without any help from any kingdom. Meanwhile, the black dragon's encampment began rained down by torrential water and was followed by a giant black dragon on a rampage. It turned out that it was all part of the plan of General Tian Lung, who wanted to slaughter the rebel troops alone without the help of the troops. With the help of the power of the giant black dragon, General Tian Lung is willing to fight alone to protect the loyal troops of the black dragon kingdom. During the fierce battle and the flood disaster created by the black dragon, a mysterious man who had been controlling the rebels suddenly appeared. The rebels were surprised when they saw their master appear in the middle of the fight. Seeing the appearance of master, General Tian Lung immediately attacked master with full strength. Sadly, master has such strong lightning power that he can kill General Tian Lung and defeat the Black Dragon. 
After learning that General Tian Lung had died, Ning Chen and the others started rushing toward the battle area to defeat the traitors. He managed to take down General Feng Jian and his army, while the princess of the emperor had to return to fight against Nei Hongzhuang. After a fierce and long battle, Ning Chen finally managed to kill General Feng Jian and massacred the entire rebel army. After the battle ended, he approached General Tian Lung's body which could no longer be saved. At that moment, Ning Chen saw a riddle written by General Tian Lung before his death. He also found the jade that was in General Tian Lung's hand and immediately secured it so as not to be snatched by the remaining traitors. On the other hand, Nei Hongzhuang and the traitors were discussing why Master suddenly appeared in the middle of the fight. They also still don't know Master's whereabouts, who suddenly disappeared after successfully killing General Tian Lung and the Black Dragon. In the evening, Ning Chen managed to find Master, who was injured badly enough that he intended to use the opportunity to kill Master. Apparently, even though Master had been badly injured, Ning Chen still couldn't match his power. Therefore, Ning Chen asked his senior woman, Xiao Er, to help mobilize her troops against Master. That night when Master returned to see Ning Chen, he wanted to kill him. Not long after, Xiao Er, a black phantom, immediately attacked Master from behind until he was thrown quite far. Ning Chen then used the opportunity to finish him with multiple sword slashes. However, even though Ning Chen managed to cut off his finger, he managed to escape into the middle of the forest. Ning Chen still didn't want to give up and kept trying to catch up to Master so their fight could occur again. Master realized that he would not be able to defeat Ning Chen at this time, so he decided to flee into the river. Ning Chen then hid in a tree branch while waiting for Master to come out of the river. The next day, Prince Wu Hang, Li Guanlan, and other traders came to the river to help their master. Not long after, Master finally came out of the river and into a stretcher to treat his wound. Ning Chen thought that Master was still not strong enough to fight at this time, so he was desperate to launch an attack on the stretcher. However, due to the attack, the entire rebel army there immediately turned against Ning Chen at the same time. As a result, he had to fight against several rebel knights and dozens of soldiers by himself. Just as Li Guanlan, Xian Feng, Yi Chang, and Wu Du were about to launch attacks simultaneously, Ning Chen used his Lotus Petal technique and Sacred Asceticism to confront them all. When the situation worsened, he immediately rushed to run away because a traitor named Zhang Luyan possessed the cultivation power of the seventh level. After realizing that the master he was dealing with earlier was fake, Ning Chen began to wonder how exactly master controlled the traitors and how much influence he wielded. Before Ning Chen returned to the royal army's encampment, Zhang Luyun confessed that he had been freed from master's influence and promised to provide Ning Chen with important information. While at the camp, Ning Chen, General Wang Chan, and several other commanders began planning an attack on Hanyu Villa because Ning Chen had previously received information from Zhang Luyun that Master was currently there. In the afternoon, Ning Chen went with the Princess of the Emperor and Xiao Er to the Hanyu Villa first to defeat Nei Hongzhuang and the other traitorous forces. But in the middle of the fight, he was suddenly caught in an iron cage trap prepared by Zhang Luyun. Apparently, Zhang Luyun had planned to trap Ning Chen from the start, so he ordered the royal troops to retreat. While on the hill, General Wang Chan's army was preparing to carry out a massacre of the traitors and Zhang Luyun's entire army. It seemed that Ning Chen had already realized that Zhang Luyun might trap him, so he deliberately brought General Wang Chan. Not only that, Ning Chen actually only pretended to be trapped in the iron cage because, in reality, he could easily escape from the cage. After Ning Chen got out of the iron cage, he immediately attacked the rebel army, followed by Xiao Er, who attacked in the form of a giant tiger. He started attacking Zhang Luyun with consecutive attacks that overwhelmed Zhang Luyun. Feeling cornered, Zhang Luyun decided to run away from that place and ran towards the waterfall hill. After defeating his army of soldiers, General Wang Chang ordered Ning Chen to search for information on Master's identity. However, before that, Ning Chen and a male general named Jin Yu would attack the gates of the Imperial Palace from the west to reclaim the palace from the rebels. Ning Chen was again blocked by Nei Hongzhuang, so the fight between the two started again. Fortunately, with the various moves that Ning Chen mastered, he could easily defeat Nei Hongzhuang and all the gatekeepers there. After Ning Chen weakened the rebel soldiers' resistance, General Jin Yi and the cavalry troops immediately broke through the Imperial Palace. However, Nei Hongzhuang and the traitors still had another way to mentally bring Ning Chen down, killing a royal male servant who had once been close to him. But instead of feeling hopeless, when Ning Chen saw the servant die in front of him, he became very angry and intended to take revenge on Nei Hongzhuang. He was determined to beat her reaching the seventh stage of cultivation. After successfully capturing the western gate of the empire, Ning Chen and the others rested for a while, remembering that Nei Hongzhuang had withdrawn her troops. After Ning Chen recovered his strength and treated his wounds, he and the others began to move to snatch the main imperial palace from the traitor's hands. 
On this occasion, he tried his best to kill Nei Hongzhuang to avenge the death of the servant he respected so much. After repelling her troops, it was discovered that Emperor Chan Lan was still alive. Still, he did not realize that some of the generals in the palace had betrayed him because the traitors did not show their rebellion to the emperor directly. When General Wang Chang heard the news that on that day, there would be a traitor who would kill Emperor Chan Lan, he and his troops immediately came to the emperor's palace to eradicate the traitors. When the situation calmed down, and things settled down again, Emperor Chan Lan bestowed Ning Chen as Marquis of the Sword, a position higher than a general. Shortly after Ning Chen's appointment ceremony, Nei Hongzhuang's army returned to fight against the royal army. When the battle started, Ning Chen realized someone was about to kill the emperor, so he immediately issued his laser stance to stop that person. As a result, the emperor survived, and the killer was immediately taken to the royal prison for interrogation. Ning Chen and the others struggled with all their might to defeat the entire rebel army and master's minions. After a fairly intense fight, Nei Hongzhuang began to feel cornered and chose to flee the imperial palace. After winning the war, General Wang Chang was appointed a marshal who would be directly responsible for protecting the imperial family, while Ning Chun would be fully responsible for overcoming the royal rebels. Although until now, master who led the rebellion was still unknown, for now, Ning Chun and the others had managed to rid the imperial palace of the traitors. This is the end of the Donghua. The moral that can be learned from this Donghua is, that when people underestimate our abilities, it is an opportunity for us to continue improving our abilities because we have more room to grow.